Hi everybody, Mrs. Britton is on and we are continuing to, in this lesson with the trumpets and we are looking at trumpets four, five and six. In our very last lesson, we looked at trumpets one, two and three and I gave, I shared with you uh, a simpli simplified meaning, a lesson suggestions for the interpretation of those first three trumpets. And so today we are going into trumpets four, five, and six. Remember to have your Bible close by so that you can read the text for yourself. If you don't have your Bible at this time, I always write down below in the description all the texts that are read in each video so in your own time you can go read those texts for yourself friends we are living in momentous times before i came on to to do this video i just checked the news and um i read that putin vladimir putin is preparing or training i think the word is practicing nuclear um, preparing for nuclear war. He's using, preparing to use his nuclear weapons. And um, we don't know what it would be like. Actually, when I read the news, Vladimir Putin, it was reported, stated that the whole world will be engulfed in war. What a terrible, evil thing to happen. But those things must happen because man's heart is so evil Men are controlled by the great arch enemy, Satan himself. And the word of God has predicted that terrible times will come upon the earth before Jesus comes. Our only protection, our only protection and our only salvation is in Jesus. So let us pray as we begin. Hello, just remember to subscribe. I must plug this in here. Subscribe, give it a thumbs up and tell someone that Mrs. Britton is on. Let us pray. Oh God, we are so thankful for your word that has not left us in darkness. What a wonderful God you are. You love us so much that we, we don't just go about willy-nilly. You are there to direct and order our footsteps in the ways of righteousness. Thank you. Bless our hearts now to understand your word. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. So let us look at trumpets four, five, and six. We're going to find out what they mean. Uh, trumpet number four, Revelation chapter eight, verses 12 and 13. Let's read Revelation chapter 8, verses 12 and 13. The fourth angel sounded, and a third of the sun, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars were struck, so that a third of them would be darkened, and the day would not shine for a third of it, and the night in the same way. Then I looked. And I heard an eagle flying in mid-heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to those who dwell on the earth, because of the remaining blasts of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. Hmm. Hmm. Woe, the last three angels. Friends, in the fourth trumpet, the sources of light, the sun, the moon, and stars are darkened. And remember, this is prophecy, so it's not literal. But I'm sure by now, if you have been following through these videos, you would realize that these objects of light represent truth and so in the fourth trumpet these objects of light are darkened so the symbols of truth are partially 
eclipsed. Notice only a third. So they are partially eclipsed in uh, trumpet number three. We see the perversion of truth and, and the growth in apostasy in the Middle Ages. And now in trumpet number four, the symbols of truth are partially eclipsed. The darkening could represent the deepening of apostasy in the church. Let's look at Exodus chapter 10. Then we will go to Job. Next, Isaiah, John chapters 1 and 3. We have quite some reading to do from the word of God. Keep in mind that the darkening of these objects of light represent a deepening of apostasy in the church. Exodus chapter 10 verses 21 to 23. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward the sky, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even a darkness which may be felt so thick. So Moses stretched out his hand toward the sky, and there was thick darkness in all the land of Egypt for three days. They did not see one another, nor did anyone rise from his place for three days. But all the sons of Israel had light in their dwellings. So what is this text saying? We are really being brought back to the imagery in the Old Testament. Job 38 verse 2. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Isaiah 8.22 then they will look to the earth and behold distress and darkness the gloom of anguish and they will be driven away into darkness john chapter 1 verses 4 to 11. Hmm. in him was life and the life was the light of men the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it. There came a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify about the light so that all might believe, believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. There was the true light which, coming into the world, enlightens every man. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and those who were, and those who were his own did not receive him. And it's not, uh, in that text, we are not referring to a literal light. It's pointing to Jesus, the light of the world. He said so himself in John. Let's look at John chapter 3 verses 18 to 21. He who believes in him is not judged. He who does not believe has been judged already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. This is the judgment that the light has come into the world and men loved the darkness rather than the light. For their deeds are evil. For everyone who does evil, let me take that again. For everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But he who practices the truth comes to the light so that his deeds may be manifested as having been wrought in God. So friends, with the fourth angel, that trumpet that was blown represents a deepening of apostasy after the Middle Ages. 
You see, it's a repetition. God is using different ways to get his message across to us. And we have studied what happened in the, mid, the Middle Ages and what happened directly after. There was a deepening of apostasy until the Reformation exposed the light, exposed Jesus, brought Jesus again and his word to the world. Now let's look at the fifth trumpet. And we are going to read Revelation chapter 8 verse 13 Revelation chapter 8 verse 13 and it says then I looked and I heard an eagle flying in the yes I heard an eagle flying in mid heaven saying with a loud voice woe 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 to those who dwell on the earth because of the remaining blasts of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. And then we go to Revelation chapter 9 verses 1 to 12. Then the fifth angel sounded and I saw a star from heaven which had fallen to the earth and the key of the bottomless pit was given to him. He opened the bottomless pit and the smoke went up out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened by the smoke of the pit then out of the smoke came locusts upon the earth and the power was given them as the scorpions of the earth have power they were told not to hurt the grass of the earth nor any green thing nor any tree but only the men who did not have do not have the seal of God on their foreheads and they were not permitted to kill anyone but to torment for five months and their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it stings a man and in those days men will seek death and will not find it they will long to die and death flees from them the appearance of the locusts was like horses prepared for battle and on their heads appeared to be crowns of gold and their faces were like the faces of men they had hair like the hair of women and their teeth were like the teeth of lions they had breastplates like breastplates of iron and the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots of many horses rushing into battle they have tails like scorpions and it stings and in their tails is their power to hurt men for five months they have a king over them the angel of the abyss his name in hebrew is abaddon and in the Greek, he has the name Apollyon. The first war is past. Behold, two more wars are coming. Yes, the first war is past. Behold, two wars are still coming after these things guess friends <laughs> yes so we have just read about the fifth we have just read about the fifth trumpet with the fifth trumpet the partial darkness of the fourth becomes total and widespread. This represents the triumph of religious apostasy and secularism in the modern age. With God and the truth totally eclipsed, sinful mankind is left to the demonic 
torment of the destructive desires. Isn't that what's happening these days? I don't even need to share the evils, the gruesome cruelties that take place on earth. Not just man to man, but nations to nations. The demons of hell, the fallen angels are wreaking havoc on this earth. And the fifth trumpet captures the demonic activity that is happening on this earth as men and when i say men i mean the whole of creation as men reject the light they are thrown into darkness spiritual darkness and demonic activity religious apostasy is taking over secularism is taking over in the modern age let us read luke chapter 10 Verses, oh, let me see if I can find it. Yes, here it is. Luke chapter 10, verses 17 to 20. And this is what it says. The 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I was watching Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing will injure you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven. Praise the Lord. The only safety you and I have, friends, is in a genuine relationship with God. That's our only safety. Let's look at Revelation chapter 9 verse 14. And then we would look at Ephesians. Uh, that would be Revelation chapter 9 verse 4. And Ephesians chapter 1 verses 13 and 14. Yes, as demonic activity increases on this earth, our only safety is in a relationship with with Jesus. Hallelujah. You and I are protected. You and I are walking in the path of righteousness because we are led by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Revelation 9 4 They were told not to hurt the grass of the earth, nor any green thing, nor any tree. But only the men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. Praise the Lord. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. In him, you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is given as a pledge of our inheritance with a view to the redemption of God's own possession, to the praise of his glory. That's where our safety lies. And we rejoice because Jesus is our safety. But friends, it is so true. What is happening in this age? As men sink deeper and deeper into being controlled by the arch enemy. And now we go into the sixth trumpet. So we will go on. Let's take it from verse 13. Uh, Revelation chapter 9. Then the sixth angel sounded. And I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God. One saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet. Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. And the four angels who had been prepared for the hour and day and month and year were released. So that they would kill a third of mankind. The number of the armies of the horsemen was 200 million. I heard the number 
of them. And this is how I saw the, in the vision the horses and those who sat on them. The riders had breastplates the color of fire and of hyacinth and of brimstone and, and the heads of the horses are like the heads of lions and out of their mouths proceed fire and smoke and brimstone. A third of mankind was killed by these three plagues, by the fire and the smoke and the brimstone which proceeded out of their mouths. For the power of the horses is in their mouths and in their tails. For their tails are like serpents and have heads, and with them they do harm. The rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands, so as not to worship demons. And the idols of gold and of silver and of brass, of stone and of wood, which could neither hear nor see or walk. And they did not repent for their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their immorality, nor of their thefts. Friends, while the first five trumpets have many allusions to ancient Egypt, the sixth trumpet particularly echoes biblical accounts regarding ancient Babylon. There are references to the river of Babylon. That's the river Euphrates in Revelation 9 verse 4. There's a reference to idolatry of Babylon in verse 20. There's a reference to the fall of Babylon in verse 21. So the lesson is that the sixth trumpet, the sixth trumpet describes an opposition to God similar to that of end time Babylon. Yes, sir. Yes, so let's read uh, Revelation chapter 17, verses 4 and 5. The woman was clothed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a cup, a gold cup full of abominations and of the unclean things of her immorality. And on her forehead a name was written, a mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. Terrible. Terrible. So, friends, the sixth trumpet has particular reference to end of time Babylon. And in succeeding lessons, we will find out who the Word of God refers to, what system the Word of God refers to as end time Babylon. For now, we will not go into the seventh trumpet, but I just want to tell you this. There are many parallels with the six below. Okay, of the sixth angel with Babylon of old. The river Euphrates, there's battle language, and there is demonic imagery. But particularly, the sixth trumpet blown by the sixth angel has reference to end time Babylon. Please note, I'm not going into the seventh trumpet as yet. Please note, however, that the seven trumpets, I'm reiterating, the seven trumpets cover the course of events from John's time until the conclusion of Earth's history. Let's remind ourselves of that in Revelation chapter 11, verses 15. To 18 
Revelation chapter 11, verses 15 to 18. And it reads, Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven, saying, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders who sit on their thrones before God fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give you thanks, O Lord God, the Almighty, who are and who were, because you have taken your great power and have begun to reign. And the nations were enraged, and your wrath came, and the time came for the dead to be judged. And the time to reward your bond servants, the prophets, and the saints, and those who fear your name, the small and the great, and to destroy those who destroy the earth. So the blowing of the seven trumpets spanned the time from John's time right up to the end of this age. The, the, the trumpets are blown while intercession is going on in heaven. And we read about that in Revelation chapter 8 verses 3 to 6. They are blown while the gospel is being preached. They are also blown while the gospel is being preached. We read about that as well. The judgments of the trumpets are partial. They affect only one third of creation. The seventh trumpet announces that the time has arrived for God to assume his rightful rule. The seven tr trumpets apply approximately to the same periods covered by the seven churches and the seven seals. Here's a summary on all the trumpets. The first two trumpets herald judgments upon nations that crucified Christ and persecuted the early church. Those nations were particularly rebellious Jerusalem and the Roman Empire. Two, the third and fourth trumpets portray heaven's judgment against the apostasy of the Christian church in the medieval period or the medieval period. Three, the fifth and sixth trumpets describe the warring factions in the religious world during the late medieval and post-reformation periods. These are characterized by increasing demonic activity that ultimately draws the world into the battle of Armageddon. Friends, there you have it. Every iota of prophecy, every iota of prophecy fulfilled as given to John. So far, the rest will be fulfilled. The prophecy covers the history of the earth. What an amazing God we serve. He loves us so much that he has chosen to reveal to us the events of the world, all intending to get us to trust him and to be ready for his return to earth. Friends, I trust Jesus. Yes, I do. I trust in Jesus. Do you trust Jesus? Do you trust in Jesus? My prayer is that you will place your trust in him today. For he loves you. And his desire is to save you from ruin. And to bless you with eternal life. Friends, I want to encourage you to pay attention to this video. 
I don't want to do too much talking. I don't want to go over 30 minutes per video. So I try to take the essentials in the lesson suggestions to share with you. What you can do is to view this video maybe twice so that you can assimilate and follow the, th the trend of interpretation. So as we close today, I want to say thank you for taking the time to listen. And remember, it is not to scare us. Well, if it does scare us, may this fear send us to Jesus. And he's waiting there with open arms to give us blessed assurance that we will be safe once we have a relationship with him. Subscribe to this channel, please. Give it a thumbs up and encourage others to come join and listen to the interpretations of prophecy. If you have any questions or comments, write them down below. Let us interact. In our next lesson, we will look at, uh, we will look into the relation of the interlude to the seven trumpets and the allusion to Daniel and the revelation. We're going to look at those two. Because there is an interlude. We would look at that before we go into, uh, before we continue with eating the scroll and the angel with a book in his hand. Let us pray. Father God, once again we thank you for your word. It is your word that is true. It is your word that opens to us the future. And as we get a glimpse of the future, we see how mighty you are. Because soon and very soon, Lord, you will come to take what is rightfully yours. May each of us prepare our hearts and our lives to be ready for when you come back to earth. We praise you, O God. Amen and amen. Until next time, when Mrs. Britton is on, goodbye. <laughs>